Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today, as you can probably tell from the video title, I'm going to be reviewing a book that hasn't yet come out and doesn't come out until April, but I read it this weekend and that is Young Mungo by Douglas Stewart. There are two covers of this, the American cover and the British cover. Which do you prefer? I don't know. When you've read the book, they both make sense actually, but when you've read it, I think the American cover makes a lot of sense. It's quite interesting but the British cover gives nothing away. They're both really good. So I read it this weekend and <laughs> what I intended to do at the weekend was actually just film a reading vlog of the things that I was reading and doing but I just ended up reading the whole of Young Mungo all weekend and finishing it. So I thought what I would do is actually give you my unedited almost unedited ramblings the things I edited out of my ramblings were the really long silences because there was lots of me going while I tried to work out what I thought about it so with those bits cut out I've made it slightly more succinct so what I'm going to do now is put in those thoughts almost unedited <laughs> they include a lot of rambling those were my thoughts as I was reading it so there were lots of things that I might say at the beginning that change by the end but it's just kind of what I was thinking as I was reading through I'm going to put those in and then I'm going to come back and summarise my thoughts about reading the whole thing and what I thought of it. Spoilers, I really liked it. Good morning, it is Saturday morning and it has just gone six o'clock I think. This video is probably very fuzzy because the lighting is terrible but I just wanted to start my vlog here and show you a Christmas tree. Christmas tree is up. Quite liking that young Mongo so far. Um, so it's about a uh, a young man called Young Mungo. Well, his name's Mungo. He's named after um, a saint, Saint Mungo, obviously. And it kind of opens up with a scene where he's going on a trip, camping with two members of Alcoholics Anonymous who his mum knows. And then it kind of goes back. Um, so I think he's 16 at that point. It's got that kind of opening where it's it's all a bit vague, you don't really know what's happening. Um, so that's why I'm a bit like, uh, I think this is what's going on, I think that's what's happening. Um, I'm only about 15% into it now. But it kind of goes back between those scenes of him camping with these two guys. And I think earlier on, again, a bit vague, um, uh, sort of memories of his sister and his brother and... Um, just their life at the moment so it's kind of scene setting there's lots of kind of scene setting going on um I'm still not entirely sure that Douglas Stewart's writing is for me I think the style is just not really my kind of thing there's a couple of moments where I feel like he just really over explains points and I just feel like oh, you could have just edited this line out Douglas like you had it here and then you kept talking about it so I'm going to continue reading and I will check in again if I remember later. I'm checking in again because it's now afternoon and I have done some more reading. I read a few more chapters of Young Mungo. Oh my god I forgot what it was called then. I've read a few more chapters of Young Mungo and I had uh, the same problem I had at the start of Shiggy Bay that kind of stopped me from reading any further. I had that problem with Young Mungo as well and that is something that I think I need to kind of gather my thoughts on a little bit more before I can say anything coherent but the way that Dr Stewart represents working class communities in that almost everyone is either an alcoholic a terrible parent violent criminal and it's just like I'm aware that that those communities exist and those pockets of communities exist. I grew up in them. But to me, and I think this is just a really personal thing, and I think when you, when you read the book, you might not necessarily know if you're not from the kind of background that he's suggesting, that, sorry, that he's uh, writing, you, you might not notice, but it seems to me always as if he's suggesting that the community is just so rife with crime and, uh, and, and terrible people and alcohol and... And I just, it's, it always strikes me as, I'm really struggling to be kind of coherent here, but it always strikes me like his books are being written by uh, a middle-aged, middle-class Tory. 
And that's how it always comes across. It's like, and that's not true because this is the kind of background that he's from, Douglas Stewart. Uh, but it always strikes me as if he's someone who, you know, has led a very comfortable life, who's going, oh, what are the poor people like? I wonder, let's write them like this. And that just, for me, that just actually just makes me angry because I'm like, well, you know, I, I grew up in a state like the one that he's describing and I just feel like there are lots of really decent, hardworking people within those communities and they don't really seem to be being represented. And that's the kind of thing that put me off about uh, Shuggy Bane and why I actually had to stop reading. Um, I just I just couldn't with it. And I do think I might go back to it, actually, which I didn't think I would. But having read, I think I'm now at like maybe 40% of uh, Young Mungo, because I've read a little bit further on, I'm starting to see a little bit more subtlety in his writing. It seems less kind of heavy handed, um, not just in terms of the writing style, but the way that he's treating the communities and the way that he represents the communities that he's talking about. Uh, there's still there are still bits of it that are that are irking me, shall we say, but I'm continuing to read and I'm going to continue later on today. OK, another update. So it's getting towards evening. And I read more than I thought I was going to of um, Young Mungo because something horrific happened and then another horrific thing happened and then another and then another. I mean, I don't know how I feel about this. I don't, I can't process. I'm halfway through the book now and... I mean, so it's now Sunday morning, just after eight o'clock, and I have finished Young Mungo. I have thoughts, I have so many thoughts, and I definitely need to take some time before um, really considering exactly how I feel about it. I quite liked it. I think I'm really glad that my experience of Shuggy Bane, in that I didn't particularly enjoy it and I stopped reading it. I'm glad that that didn't stop me reading from... reading from? I'm just clearly too tired. Didn't stop me from reading more Douglas Stewart and I do actually now want to go back and give Shuggy Bane another try. I really, really like his characterization. The characters are so vivid. Um, they are so complex. Some of them are deeply unlikable. And some of them are deeply, deeply unlikable, with no redeeming features. Um, but they're all incredibly vividly drawn, incredibly realistic. There were some moments, I think, and I don't know if, again, this is just a personal thing from, you know, from my life experience, but there were moments described in some of the, the tenement flats where I could, I could visualise myself and I could when someone put a plate down I could I could hear it being being placed down I could I could feel the the air in the room like I it, it was it was incredibly vividly described there were a few bits of the story that I felt were perhaps not unnecessary but I didn't quite know why he made the choice to 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 write those in and to have it like that um so there's the the th scenes that are happening in the present and then there's the scenes that are happening in the past and most of it's set in the past and the stuff that happened in the past I was thinking this is the kind of novel that I wanted to read this is the kind of novel that from the blurb I thought we were going to get and the things that happen in the present which is the shocking things I just didn't know why that was necessary and I kind of see when you get to the end why it was necessary but the ending has some characters behaving in ways that are really odd given what we've come to expect trying to do this without spoiling anything but there's a character that does something at the end like right at the end and you just think I wouldn't have expected that from all of the build-up we've got I don't feel like we've seen any hint that that was going to happen so it almost felt slightly unrealistic that they would do such a thing it's really hard to explain this without spoiling anything so I'm going to stop now and um, there were also a couple of moments where uh th there were things that I thought this this reads like a really bad trope in a YA book um like the absence of parents and the reason for that in order to create the circumstances so things could happen. Um, there were a couple of moments like that where I just thought, oh, I see why this thing is happening in order for this plot point to happen. And that's one of the things that I think, again, it kind of felt like a first novel because there were some things that 
you just kind of felt like I can see you writing and I can see you thinking about oh, how am I going to make this scene happen or to make this scene happen I need to make this happen and you do sometimes get that with with first novels or clearly second novels that you can almost see the writing process um and the I, I think there were moments where I just I would have wanted the story to go in other directions but I'm always very um adamant when I'm reading books that and reviewing them that I don't think you can badly judge a book based on what you wanted to happen and what your expectations were I think the blurb uh, the description of the book isn't quite accurate and so I thought it was going to be a different kind of book I think the blurb of the book makes it sound a lot like a romance I mean it kind of is there is romance in there which is very sweet but it's very dramatic and no spoilers no spoilers it's very dramatic and a page turner I mean I actually couldn't stop reading and I didn't want to stop reading especially towards the end and it the ending I think will frustrate some people and other people will absolutely love it I quite liked it I, I quite liked the ending it was quite good so one of the things that I was talking about and that struck me most strongly was the representation of working class communities in Douglas Stewart's books and I think that well I've thought about this a lot I thought about it all day I finished the book very early this morning and I've been thinking about it all day and I think that if you're not from a working class community it can be really hard to imagine yourself there and imagine what it's like and I think sometimes People rely a lot on what they see on TV, what they see on the news. And what I always hope that literature can do is give people a different insight. So sometimes when I read books that are similar to Douglas Stewart's, when they do represent people in working class communities as being criminals and alcoholics and terrible parents and abusive parents or lovers or whatever, um, I just feel a little bit disappointed. I feel like I've been let down. I feel like oh look, there's another person misrepresenting my community. But I think actually, on reflection, I don't think there's any other way to write a novel like this because there are so many people who, like I said, won't understand that setting and won't understand that culture. And there's no real good way of doing it, I don't think, without actually making the characters as he has made them. So I think my, my initial gut reaction was, I don't think it was wrong, but I think in hindsight, actually, it kind of makes sense the way that he's done things. I think a lot of it is scene setting. It's how do you convey, as you would a fantasy world, as you would if you were describing any world that a lot of people don't live in, if you were writing a novel about the royal family, you would need to set that scene so that people understand that world. And I think that's what Douglas Stewart does. I personally, for me, I think there's too much scene setting, but that's because he only really has to give these very small scenes and I understand exactly what's going on. I understand where we are, who we are, what is going on. I understand the circumstances and I, I don't need any more scene settings. So for me, it feels a little bit too much. For other people, possibly not very much. So I think if you're similar to me, maybe you maybe you found um, Shuggy Bane a little bit, you know, a little bit like I did, a little bit too much, a little bit too cliched about the descriptions of working class life. I, th I think you just need to accept that it is kind of scene setting and move on past that. And I think once you do get past that, the novel is just so, so much richer and so much more interesting. I, I, I did really like it. The other thing that I think is sort of in line with this about working class communities and that really struck me and I thought about this a lot afterwards, and I'm going to say this very delicately so I don't say anything too rude on YouTube and get blocked, but there is a certain class of or type of adult uh, video and um, requests on uh, applications on your phone if you're a homosexual man I'm being very delicate here but there are certain categories of those where young working class boys are highly prized and <laughs> having said that delicately you might know, not know what I'm talking about in which case just just go with it you don't need to know it's, it's no but what I feel like Douglas Stewart is doing with this novel is reclaiming for young working class boys the right to not be perved over by middle and upper class men. 
and really reclaiming the story for themselves by not creating the love outside of their community but by finding the love within their community by not um overly sexualizing like the, the the scenes of romance or the scenes of sex in the book um are very delicately handled are very tasteful are quite gay which is great but they're not overly done they they're not um i don't feel like they're they're being made for anyone else i feel like they're being made for the community that is being celebrated in there i really feel like he's kind of like i said reclaiming their story and celebrating working class communities and the lives of these young boys as well and that really comes through if you read it that kind of love that he has for no way i was going to say the love that he has for young working class boys that's not what i meant you know what i meant and that's not what i meant but obviously being part of that community himself growing up like that um the, the characters in the book i think it's set in sort of the early to mid 90s and i was of a similar age then so a lot of the parts of the book whew, got me quite emotional uh, really hit me quite hard and that's why to me it felt like a little bit of a love story to that time and to, to people of that time and the experiences of queer people growing up at that time in the early 90s where things were pretty tough especially if you're in the kind of communities that that are represented in this book so that's another thing that I really wanted to reflect on afterwards and one of the kind of the last things that I really thought of actually really hit me when I was shopping for food today and I was walking around Tesco's and the tannoy was playing um, Dream a Little Dream by um, Mums and Puppets and uh, I was humming along because it's one of my favourite songs and then I stopped my trolley possibly to the annoyance of lots of people behind me sorry but it suddenly occurred to me the parallels between the book and Beautiful Thing okay so if you don't know what I'm talking about a Beautiful Thing was a play which was written by Jonathan Harvey and it was first performed, I think, 1993, 94, I think 93. And there was a movie made of it in 1996. It is about two 16-year-old um, boys, I think they're 16 in the film, um, on a council estate in South London who essentially fall in love with each other. One of them is very sensitive and one of them is very sporty um, and a little bit of a stereotype perhaps, but it's a beautiful story and it is a story about family and acceptance or lack of acceptance and violence from families and alcohol. And really it just struck me how many um, parallels there are just between the kind of essence of both the stories. And actually there were in fact some, some scenes and some lines and I won't say what they were because that would be to give too many spoilers away I think but there were certain scenes and certain lines that really really struck me afterwards when I realised this connection oh that's that's kind of like a nod to beautiful thing that that's a kind of uh, an almost a kind of homage it feels a little bit like young Mungo is a love letter written to the characters of beautiful thing and there are enough differences it's not a direct copy of it it's not the same story at all um so don't think i'm giving away spoilers by saying this because it's not the same story but it, they are both love stories and they are about young working class boys but one of the things that both of them do that young mungo and beautiful thing do is that they celebrate working class life in all of its foibles in all of its ugly drama and tension and stress and love and it celebrates both of those things and it feels very much like young mongo is is a love letter back to back to that film back to that play i absolutely loved that i thought it was just wonderful and the echoes uh, from one to another just perfect i really really liked that i think that what douglas stewart is so good at in this book is developing characters the characters are incredibly vivid and i think the other thing that's also really good is the way that he creates these just really small intimate scenes so it's either scenes between people or just within small spaces and he really vividly describes those small places i was in that kitchen i was in that corridor i was in that airing cupboard <laughs> I, I, you know i i was i was right there the whole time and i think douglas stewart is really really brilliant at that no personally i don't like all the scene setting at the start but that's just a personal thing that's what book reviews are on youtube after all uh i think that you know if you feel like that isn't your kind of thing please do read it you'll get past that you'll hopefully find it as wonderful as i do i'm really looking forward to when it comes out so lots more people can read it but also so that i can get a copy 
and read it again and kind of see how my thoughts have evolved. So I think that's everything that I have to say about Young Mungo. I'm really glad that I read it. I'm really glad that the publishers sent me a copy, thank you very much. And at that I'm going to stop talking. I hope you're all well. Um, let me know if you're excited for Young Mungo or if everything that I've just said has turned you off and makes you not want to read it. I'm sorry, but hopefully, hopefully it hasn't. Uh, and until next time, thank you so much for watching.